Put on your dancing shoes. It's time to polka. This week on Sierra Shorts, take a trip to Virginia City, visit with members of the band Rain, drop by the Great Basin Brewery, take in some art at the Blue Lion Gallery, get a makeover with the Pansonas, and catch Madison Avenue's set at the Hilton. All this and much, much more. So grab a cold one, toss the remote, and join us for this week's episode of Sierra Shorts. Hi, I'm Mike Bosick. Welcome to Sierra Shorts, the show that rides up on you. Gastonia, North Carolina. A small group of bank robbers they hit an armored truck and made off with over a half a million dollars. The friends decided with their newfound wealth, they no longer belonged in a trailer park. So they went and purchased a half a million dollar home with cash. And guess what? They were quickly apprehended. Artisville, Oklahoma. You'd think it'd be common sense to show up sober for an arraignment hearing on drunken driving charges? Obviously not for Charles Ronald Laws, 52, who was led from the Washington County Courthouse in handcuffs after failing a sobriety test. Laws was scheduled to be arraigned on charges of possession of marijuana and transporting an open container of alcohol. The town of Lauderdale, Florida is very upset after a plaque intended to honor James Earl Jones instead honored the wrong man. The plaque was to be displayed at a celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. life. But instead of honoring Jones, the plaque said, Thank you, James Earl Ray, for keeping the dream alive. James Earl Ray was the man who assassinated King in 1968. I'm Victoria Monroe, and I'm here at the El Dorado showroom on the stage with rain a tribute to the Beatles. Yeah, yeah, yeah! I'm Mark Lewis and I play keyboards. There was a, a lot of songs that incorporated uh, string sections, horns, keyboards, synthesizers. And to do it right, whatever is on the record we do, and whatever the four of them can't cover, I cover. I'm Steve Landis and I play the part of John Lennon. I got into Beatlemania when I was 17. The Beatlemania Broadway show closed uh, in the late 80s. And uh, yeah, so we uh, got together with Mark and started Rain. Mr. Ralph Castelli, and what part do you play, Ralph? I play the part of Ringo Starr. We were all stars of a Broadway show called Beatlemania, and uh, that's how we all met in the uh, later part of the 70s. When Beatlemania stopped touring, we all joined up with uh, Rain. We've been together for 25 years. It's, we're like a very close family, you know. It's so phenomenal. George Harrison and the uh, Rain a tribute to the Beatles. That's what I do. I had been doing some studio work in New York and I had been playing smaller, you know, club kind of things, just you know, just trying to make a living. And all of a sudden it came into this and it was just a great, great, great time. Okay, and what do you do? I play Paul McCartney. I play, I play bass and uh, piano and guitar in the show. You've been described as the best, most phenomenal Paul McCartney impressionist. Thank you. Back in 64 when I saw him uh, on the Ed Sullivan show, uh, from that moment I wanted to do what he did. 
Now, tell us more about your website. It's www.raintribute.com. And our show, you can actually request songs and we'll do it for you. This is Victoria Monroe. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Did you have fun tonight, everybody? This group, Rain, love the Beatles. They do their songs fantastically, fabulously. Employ them. We're here at the Great Basin Brewery in downtown Sparks, and this is Tom. Today, we're brewing one of our favorite beer team, Harvest Ale, which is a wonderful beer made with local ingredients. In addition to barley and hops, we add uh, juniper berries, sagebrush, and pinion pine that's all locally produced. Once a year, we make this beer. Uh, it's not an easy beer, it's not a fast beer, not a cheap beer, but it's a Great Basin beer. Well, great, thanks. Let's go check it out. Good idea. We're here with Carl Baker the head brewmaster at the Great Basin Brewery. Carl, how are you doing today? Good, Mike. I'm doing real good. Tell me a little bit about how to make this harvest beer and what makes it so special. Well, this harvest beer is made once a year uh, in the fall. Uh, it's a real good winter-type ale um, with a lot of basic two-row barley. But then it also has some uh, special barley in it, too. And that would be some Crystal 60 barley a little bit of Munich barley, some Carrot Hills barley, and some roasted barley for some color. Okay, um, you add water and then what? And we add water to the grist or the ground of barley, and that sits at a temperature of around 152 for an hour or so. And what that does is it takes all the starch and the enzymes change it to a fermentable sugar. At that point, we leach hot water through that barley or that grain bed and we take all that water into the boil kettle, reach our volume, start our boil, and at that point we have the hops. We're using pearl hops and we're using some powder towel hops, both of German descent. And uh, from there it's then cooled down and added to the fermenter, and it is pitched with a nice British type ale yeast, and it'll take about anywhere from two weeks to three weeks to ferment out and at that point, we're ready to filter it, move it into the cold room, filter it, and it'll be ready at the bar for anybody that comes in and, and wants a harvest ale. Well, great. We'll be down to have some. Hey, watch Sierra Shorts. <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. you get these drugs? I got them from my big brother. I see. Well, little brother, if you're willing to work with us, we may be able to go easy on you. If you testify against your brother and plead guilty to fill any possession of drugs, then you may be out of prison in as little as five years. But if you plead innocent, you could be sent to prison for the rest of your life. You mean the best thing to do is to plead guilty? Well, I, I guess the choice is clear. Yes, the choice is clear, isn't it? This negotiation is known as a plea bargain. A plea bargain occurs when a prosecutor threatens a person with an extremely harsh sentence in order to get them to plead guilty to a lesser charge. This bypasses the need for a jury trial, saving the taxpayers valuable time and money. What could little brother have done to avoid this difficult situation? He should have kept his mouth shut. That's right, no matter what a police officer says or threatens you with, you should politely refuse to answer any questions and remain silent until you are able to speak to a lawyer. News Ajax! Boom, boom. Colgate's new Ajax cleans all bathroom surfaces up to 50% faster. Use Ajax! Boom, boom. The foaming cleanser! Get things clean, just like a whiz. You'll stop paying the elbow tax when you start cleaning with Ajax. So use Ajax, the foaming cleanser. Wipes the dirt right down the drain. Ajax leaves no gritty cleanser scum in top or sink. So use Ajax, the foaming cleanser. Wipes the dirt right down the drain. Ajax, the new scouring cleanser, foams as it cleans. 
Ajax cuts grease faster than any other leading cleanser. Ajax polishes with half the effort. Mmm, and it smells good, too. So use Ajax! Hi, we're in Virginia City with uh, Mace. He's a slot mechanic of Virginia City's most famous bar, the Mark Twain Casino and Saloon. Hi, Mace. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. And you? Very good. Thank you. Mace, tell us a little bit about your job. What do you do over at the Mark Twain Casino? Well, what I do is I actually kind of handle the floor personnel and uh, take care of the machines, um, kind of like the boss's gopher, shall we say. And what's good about the Mark Twain Casino? Why would one want to go there? Well, the Mark Twain Casino actually has a lot of history behind it. Um, uh, it's uh, Mark Twain is actually dwelled there. Um, also, it's open 24-7, so it's a good place to meet a lot of locals and hear a lot of the uh, stories past and present. Mark Twain's a very uh, nice place to work at. It, uh, we've got a pretty good balanced crowd. Um, as, as far as things that I've seen, uh, you'd be surprised how many uh, characters we have in town. There is uh, Red Dog and Sweetwater John, which I'm sure you've met already. And uh, if you've uh, taken a look at some of the paintings or photographed them inside, you'll notice uh, you'll see some artist work by uh, John Hunt. So it's a great place to see art and locals as well. Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. What's your favorite part about the Mark Twain Casino? Uh, the slots, of course. Now, Mason, I notice you're wearing a particular key on there. Can you tell us a little bit about the symbology of that key? Well, we have a little group here in town um, called the uh, 601 Vigilance Committee. And as you can see, we uh, generally don't ask about the key. Never ask about the key. We don't ask about the key. So as a vigilante, then, you would be responsible for enforcing law for people? Actually, just 86 and you out of the Mark Twain. 86 and you out of Mark Twain. <laughs> Uh, we're here in Virginia City. Thank you, Mace, very much for being part of this interview. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for uh, coming down and sharing uh, your time with us. And thank you very much. And again, don't talk about the key. Now, ah, here's one. Sweden. Ah, we all know that it's wild in Sweden. Now home to the world's first museum dedicated to fermented herring. It opens next year, so make your vacation plans now. Fermented herring. Mmm, that sounds good. Angela Russo, 79, was hospitalized after health officials found more than 300 rats in his Daytona, Florida home. According to an official, the rats were well-fed and domesticated and apparently had bonded with Russo. Just as I've always said, a man's best friend is his rat. Ukrainian candy company has begun marketing what may be the stickiest, richest, and most fattening treat on the market. Pure pork fat covered in chocolate. Cracking open a finger-sized stick of fat in chocolate reveals exactly that, a vein of white fat. The dark chocolate produces pokes that the traditional Ukrainian snack of salo or salted pork fat usually consumed with vodka and pickles. Hello, this is Zushila. How are you doing tonight? Listen, you know, sometimes I ask myself, where is the magic? Where is the magic in the life anymore? You know, just because I have such a glamorous life on TV does not mean that I don't have to deal with laundry, toilet paper, kitty litters. You know, I have uh, things that I don't process well at all either. But you know something, what is good? We are all in this big boat together. So we have to try to help one another. I think I'm going to help someone right now because I feel the phone. There is someone on the other side that wants to talk to me. Hello, this is Sushila. Can I help you? Hi. Hello. My long-haired chihuahua is suffering from severe depression and I have a hangnail. What can I do? You know, you sound depressed as well. Do you and the dog are very close? 
Well, actually, his depression has caused me to have a severe depression as well, and I can't quit howling at the moon. You know, I want to ask you, you are you having problems like going out at night, maybe sniffing around the trees and such? I'm really partial to the begonias. I like them. I like the flowers. And is, is your nose cold and wet? No, it's not. You're not squatting on the yard, are you? Well, um, you know, that's so personal. It's just so depressing. I just don't know what to do. Well, you I know, you're almost too depressing for me to even help. Because, you know, you're aggravating the hell out of me. I can't even find out what's wrong with you. You talk so slow. What about Listen, my hangnail? You know, cut the hangnail, cut the stinking hangnail. You're driving me crazy, I'm telling you. Listen, sweetie, I've got to go. I'll call you next time and help you out. Okay, okay bye-bye, darling. Another one who talks so slow, I can't even understand what she's saying. But listen, tune in next time because maybe we can have a more speedy show, okay? Thank you. This is Ushila Goodnight. <laughs> The piece that I've got here is uh, kind of a briefcase. It's supposed to mimic uh, kind of a dirty bomb of sorts. And if you look at the piece, there's an actual piece of Trinitite, which was created, it's a substance that was created during that one or two seconds when the very first nuclear bomb was exploded at the Trinity site in New Mexico. So that's an actual piece of that. The, there's a picture of the Trinity explosion and a map, if you look down on it, um, of what the bomb site looked like afterwards. And uh, it's not as uh, radioactive as you might think. The half-life of most of these elements was pretty short, the most dangerous stuff. But the idea of having this miniature briefcase um, with a piece of Trinitite in it, so uh, obviously with all the worries about dirty bombs and terrorists and things like that, uh, the idea that we were the first ones, uh, Americans, to create uh, these bombs, I just kind of wanted to tie those two things together. That's kind of how the piece came to be. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Dirty bombs and terrorists and things like that. Ready? Ready? Dirty bombs and terrorists and things like that. Dirty, dirty, dirty bombs. My name is Judge Bob. My job was to decide whether or not you're guilty. Since you already told us you're guilty, we could skip straight to the punishment part and I can get back to my ball game. These federal mandatory minimum laws make my job real easy. I just look your crime up in my little book here and it tells me what to do. Tarnations! 235 months in prison? Well, it'd be cheaper to kill you, but my hands are tied on this one. So ordered. Now let's see how the Cowboys are doing. Although prison time is an extremely stiff penalty for a non-violent drug possession offense, it's an essential part of Uncle Sam's daring Zero Tolerance program. Although the program has not had any impact on actual drug use in the United States, it has been wildly effective in creating customers for the rapidly growing U.S. prison industry. Drug charges are responsible for three out of every five federal prisoners in America and are what have made our country a leader in global prison innovations. In the U.S., one in every 34 adults is incarcerated, on probation, or on parole. This pie chart illustrates where the prisoners of the world are incarcerated. As you can see, the major players in this industry are Russia, China, and the U.S. The U.S. leads the pack with fully one quarter of the world's prisoners. Quite impressive for a country which only accounts for one twentieth of the world's population. It's Movie Reviews with the Chroma Fish. Lyle Lovett of Klein, Texas writes, How come you never review any movies I've been in? Fair enough. He was pretty good in Titanic. And while the first couple of hours of the movie were kind of draggy, the last half makes it all worthwhile. And wait a minute, I guess that was Leonardo DiCaprio. Sorry, I always get those two confused. 
Lyle was in some Altman films, such as The Player and Cookie's Fortune. Here he is with Liv Tyler. Is it just me, or does anyone else think she looks like a largemouth bass? I mean that in a good way. I'd swim upstream with her any day. Anyway, this has been Movie Reviews with the Chroma Fish. It's Movie Reviews with the Chroma Fish. Tampa, Florida. A guy filed a lawsuit against the Tampa Electric Company because he absorbed 13,000 volts after he climbed up one of the company's transformers in what he called a drunken stupor, quote unquote. The voltage burned 60% of his body. He told the reporter that he is unable to control his urge to drink. Arkansas. A man is frantically yelling into the phone. My wife's pregnant and her contractions are only two minutes apart. Doc asks, is this her first child? The guy screams back, no, you idiot, this is her husband. In attempts to drive gang members out of the Boston subway station, the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority Police has come up with a brand new idea. Cheerful show tunes and marches of the late American composers George Gershwin and John Philip Sousa are being played over the brand new speakers installed at the station. Police claim that in this case, brass and strings are a positive alternative to handcuffs and pepper spray. With makeup and everything. I get a makeover by the best. Chiquita, yeah. she knows exactly what she's doing. She's going to make me lovely. I got hot day tonight. No, I've got to be sexy. Oh, de be definitely. Okay. All right. We do the eyeliner. See, on each side, she got a little tail. We want to get a little bit of color right. down here. Just a little bit to highlight, okay? Oh, I feel beautiful. I feel well, so you beautiful. are beautiful. Don't worry beautiful. about it. Okay, we want to put reds in her hair. Yeah. And then you can use these fancy little combs. Look oh, at her. I think she looks so good. nice. <laughs> you see, I need to look sexy because uh, most of the time I look too smart, too sophisticated. And tonight, like I said, hot date. You don't know what I'm going to get into. Uh huh. So I think you look just lovely. Oh. Do you know, I do have a lipstick. It's kind of a big sin color. Do you know, like a lady that's going to vamp you? Oops. Oh, I vamp. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. You got to keep your lips still oh. when I'm talking to you, okay? Or I mean, when I'm putting your lips here, now I have to even it on that side. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. All right, let's pull it a little bit right here. Okay. Well, anyway, that's enough for our beauty I feel guys. lovely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for coming in. And um, next time we're going to be taking ballerina lessons. All right, hey, this is Rob with Sierra Shorts. I just did a spoken word slam poetry performance meant to enlighten and enliven my fellow human beings out there all around in this place we call America. Because the thing is that stuff's going down. Stuff's going down, man, and we've got to wake up. We've got to find the stuff inside of us to come together and look past all the crap that they put between us, all this racism and sexism and all the ismisms. Matter. What I do is I express with my heart through poetry to y'all what I see and what I feel and what I hope that y'all can understand with me. So come, wake up. Hi, my name is Alan Loney from the series of Shorts and this is my piece. It's uh, called The Match Way. It represents um, emulation back in 1963. A man by the name of uh, that Wine Go set himself on fire and this represents
Frank, have you seen my hands? I can't pick up the laundry basket with these clay hands. I mean, claw hands. I mean, lobster hands. I mean, you know what I'm saying, Frank. Frank! Frank, help me! Look at my legs. I have extra legs and I can't even walk. I have this big stinger here in the back. Did you see that, Frank? Frank, are you gonna help me with the housework or what? They call me Cuban Pete. Frank. I'm the king of the Roomba Pete. Frank. When I play the maracas, I go chick chicky boom, chick chicky boom. Frank. Yes, sir, I'm Cuban Pete. I'm the craze of my native street. Frank. When I start to dance, everything goes chick chicky boom, chick chicky boom. Oh, maybe get extra sensitive. If you have been experiencing apprehension, anxiety, or increased paranoia, you may be one of the millions suffering from post-9-11 stress-related disorder. Ask your physician if medicinal marijuana might not be right for you. Just because it makes you feel silly doesn't mean it isn't serious medicine. prisoners in the world were to hold hands, they would stretch from Siberia to San Quentin. Of course, that's unlikely to happen as prisoners' hands are kept very busy by the U.S. prison industry. Thanks to new partnerships between business and government, prisoners are now able to pay for the cost of their own incarceration by producing goods and services for many of the U.S.'s most prestigious companies, including Microsoft, Nike, Planet Hollywood, and Victoria's Secret. Although prisoners typically only earn a few cents to roughly a dollar per hour, they learn valuable skills that will help them find jobs and stay out of trouble when their sentences are up. In the prison labor system, inmates prepare for rewarding careers in bolt polishing, attaching made-in-the-USA labels to garments manufactured in Honduras, and shrink-wrapping Microsoft software. Thanks to unregulated prison labor policy, I'm learning unmarketable skills while earning the same wages as many hard-to-get jobs in Mexico and Southeast Asia. Thanks, America! Thank you for joining us here at Sierra Shorts.